any questions, Emma, you want to take these off? Sure, I, I was going to ask about Challen. Um, what what did he show in the whole last year that, that led him to this point of getting a scholarship? Yeah, you know, uh, came here as a walk-on out of the junior college ranks, and if you know his story, which I do, uh, really close with the Tonga by Loa family, and, and uh, came in, just one of those guys that does any and everything that you ask. It's like the ultimate uh, team member, teammate. Uh, last year, really filled a lot of roles, whether it was special teams, filling in as a, a backup running back. But, you know, I think the best thing he did was he brought great energy and great passion um, each and every day, and it, it kind of has rubbed off. You know, he's one of our most uh, beloved players. Was it obvious, um, or whose idea was it that Talia was going to be the one to get to Say it. Yeah, I thought, I mean, for me, I, I knew how close those two were. Um, you know, it would be easy for me to do it, but, you know, the Ravens have been great to us. You know, over two of the last three years, we've gone there and we've awarded a scholarship to a walk on. And so uh, when we had the, the, the leaders go down on the field with me, we kind of didn't tell Leah till right before because we didn't want the, him to kind of give it away and take away from the suspense of it. But, you no, know, I thought it was more, it was fitting for Leah to be able to do it because of how close those two are. Uh, where did the idea come from to give out the scholarship to Warren and be Ravens? I mean, as we all know, we always try to find a unique way to reward it because it's a special moment uh, for walk-ons. I mean, these are guys that play the game because they love it and they want to, not because they get a scholarship or a check. And so, you know, anytime you can reward them and then also publicly do it uh, really helps uh, the morale and it's great that it happens. We've been fortunate, like I said, that the Ravens have been great partners with us when we've gone up there for games in two of the last three years, and it just was a great, a great way for us to, to kind of reward them and do it publicly. Uh, how, how, um, how soon did you let his parents know that he mentioned to us that his parents knew about it before he did? Yeah, we called them the day of just okay. because we didn't want to, again, give it away. I uh, wanted to kind of give them a heads up that if they had a chance to maybe see the game, because I know it was being telecast, that they may have an opportunity to see it happen. So day of, you know, on our way up there, our operations people up here uh, called and kind of let the parents know that it was going to be happening. Shifting focus to camp, you've talked about how you want your players to have a certain mindset with them bubbling at the hotel and coming here. Have you seen that kind of coming too much in these last two weeks? You know what, I've been really pleased with where we are with camp. As I said, uh, you know, after the scrimmage Saturday, there's been a, a competitiveness uh, that, I, that I hadn't seen since I've been here. And, you know, obviously we've increased our depth. Uh, we've increased our talent level, which allows that to happen. Um, as I like to say, you start seeing the player-driven culture really surface, especially when you have hot days like today. And we've been able to, you know, get out and really have to work through some of the weather adversity. We've had rain day, we've had some really hot days. And I like the way that they've responded collectively. Uh, has it been perfect? No, we still got a lot of work to do. And, and you know, but I do like the way this team is is moving and moving forward toward our goal, which is to you know put a team out on the field September 4th that uh, knows what to do and will do it with the right kind of discipline and, and, and handle the type of adversity that will happen during a game the right way. I think you back in on that question. What do you want to see? From your team going into week three, what progression do you want to see? Yeah, for us, it's you know this scrimmage. This is the second and basically the last scrimmage before we actually play the game. And so, you know, as a staff, we've had some personnel meetings. We're starting to try to work groups together to see hey, what roles guys are def def uh, developing for themselves. And in this scrimmage, it'll be a, a little more mixed matching and, and really as if we were playing the game this week. And so what we need to do is see which of these young players that we've recruited will be able to help us in, in any of the three phases uh, and then continue to let the other guys define what kind of roles they'll have. You know, who are the guys that we count on to make plays for us offensively, defensively, and special teams. And so, you know, with this you know, two weeks out, this next week is going to be really important for players to really define the roles that they'll have and, and, and help us as we start preparing for West Virginia. Will the scrimmage be kind of the same format that the last one was? It'll be a situational scrimmage, but we'll hit a few different situations that we didn't get in the first scrimmage. What, what are you going to see? Before? What do you want to see out of your running back room? And um, you know, kind of a follow up to that. Um, I know you had Jake Buck last year, but the chances to kind of have multiple options this 
here. Um, how do you feel like it helps the rushing attack just knowing that you have uh, multiple different guys that can get the job done? Well, I mean, you know, with me and, and the running backs, we've always kind of been a running back by committee room. Um, you know, the day of one guy carrying it 35, 40 times uh, just, you know, is it beneficial because you want a fresh guy out there. We're very fortunate with uh, Tayon Fleet Davis coming back for that super senior year and being able to have his experience. But then the game experience, we were able to get Penny and, and uh, Isaiah last season and then been really impressed, like I said, with the two freshmen. So we've been able to create some depth uh, with anything in the running back world that starts with protecting the football, making sure that the guys are, are possessing the ball, but then, you know, protecting the quarterback and doing all the little things without the football, which is key at that position. Coach, how has the, the new place worked out for you? You're getting the benefits that you anticipated from the Jones Hill House? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. I mean, the setup and the way it's developed uh, for us to be able to, you know, our meeting rooms, we're able to go into meeting rooms and come right out the door and be on the practice field, which when it's teaching and installing, a great benefit. So a lot of thought was put into how this building is laid out and set up, and it's definitely uh, beneficial for the development of, of your players. And as I say, very player-centric in terms of how the building was put together. And it's been great to be able to uh, have such a, a great uh, facility. Uh, Coach, uh, I didn't see Jay Sean Jones for the team uh, when we walked the practice. There did. Been uh, yeah. Oh, he. I didn't see. Him. Oh man, he was oh. out here. But oh my God, that's uh, that's okay. Maybe that. wasn't in uniform. Okay, he was out here. I think okay, he should have been at practice. <laughs> you, know, you know, as what happens when you get to this time of camp, you give guys some days off. The nicks and bruises, the everyday, uh, not real concern. Uh, you know, today was one of those days where we wanted to give them a little extra time uh, as we get into. I think this is practice 14 for us. Uh, the receivers and DBs tend to put a lot of mileage on, and we're doing all the. the GPS system stuff, and so we, we chart the player low, but the expectation is he'll be able, be able to play for us come West Virginia week. Can you feel the benefit of having a stable quarterback situation, a returning starter when you're out here in the fall? Having spent a lot of years in Maryland uh, and having dealt with the instability of the quarterback room, it definitely is a, a, a pleasure to have a returning guy like Leah, and then to be able to add a guy like Reese, and then the development of David, and as, as well as Eric. Uh, has really been uh, has been great to have because we all know that have been here for any amount of time that the quarterback room has really been one of those rooms that, and, and again, I hate even talking about it because I want to make sure I don't jinx us, but no, it's great to have a, a, a returning starter that understands the system and then to add and get the depth from a guy like Reese and, and the development of the other two has really helped our team. Can you talk a little bit about the progression of some of the younger defensive backs, like Bo Bray getting to play under so many experienced veterans? Yeah, you know, Bo was a guy that played last year for us some, and, and as I like to say, you know, anytime we're going to always be in a developmental mode with these young players, and I want to try to get them on the field because, as we all know, injuries are part of the game, and even last year with COVID, not knowing who was going to be available, we made a conscious effort to develop our, our backups and make sure that they get enough play so that come year two, it's not like the, uh, they've never done it before. So Bo is one of those guys that has benefited from those type of reps. Uh, you know, Corey Coley getting in there early, a January grad, and being able to go through spring ball, uh, I think that's really helped him. Um, guys like Glendon Miller, uh, I'm really pleased with the way the young secondary uh, has been playing. And, you know, they, they, they're doing a great job of communicating. And, you know, I think that, that'll be one of the strengths of our team. Coach, you talked in the past about how this is the one time of year where your guys can kind of 24-7 focus on football. And that goes for your coaches as well. How do you think both them, uh, both of those groups have responded to this camp? I hope we better be 24-7 with coaches all year long. I mean, for us, uh, we do have a lot of hats to wear, uh, obviously, during the season, making sure that, you know, the guys are being the best students, the best players, and then being the best people off the field. But, um, you know, anytime you get to spend the time we have uh, out here and putting the the installs together. And as I said, I've been really pleased with, and a lot of the work was done this summer by the group. Uh, you know, the player run practices this summer, you know, I think they had 100% uh, availability, meaning everybody was here all summer long, and it's really benefited us uh, as we move into year three. One, one thing you've talked about a few times is uh, self-inflicted wounds and, you know, kind of cleaning up the mistakes. Um, is there anything you've kind of done specifically over yeah, the last those week crazy. or so to kind of <laughs> work on that and improve on that? Well, I mean, again, it's like I use the raising kid analogy a lot. Uh, 
Uh, you constantly are talking to your guys about doing things with the right kind of uh, discipline. Um, as we all know, if you had an 18 to 22 year old, uh, discipline is something that you can't just talk about. Um, we do everything we can. You know, we have referees out here at practice to, to chart penalties. Uh, each day we keep a, a tab of the self-inflicted wounds, like on offense, we call it our margin of error. On defense, missed assignments, missed tackles. And then we show them on tape. And so, you know, what we hope is by continuing to hold them accountable, making sure we are showing them it on tape and, and talking about it, and sometimes, you know, the physical reminders of when you jump off sides or, get a holding call that we have some uh, physical reminder things that we do uh, we'll continue to do that but as I've said before that's going to be really uh, critical for us this season uh, two main things for us is being a team that will we play with discipline and then the second will be how we respond when we face adversity Take one more. and when you looked at kind of the group of tight ends that you have right now you know either we're here and didn't play much on the field or new faces what have you been seeing in camp that's really impressed you from them yeah, you know, last year was a tough one for our tight end position. As anybody that knows us, the type of offense we run, we want to have the multiple sets that tight ends bring. And, you know, last year with Chig opting out and, and you know, Malik being kind of injured, uh, we had to move Corey uh, Deitches in to, to tight end near the end of the year. But it's been great because we filled some needs in recruiting uh, with the two freshmen, uh, Weston and CJ coming in, and they both luckily were here during the spring to go through spring practice. And I've been happy kind of the depth that we've created, but also just the uh, production that we've gotten out of the position uh, during the course of training camp. Thank you. Thanks, guys.